Good morning. So glad that you're here to worship together with us. Um, it really is a blessing as we go through our lives that these moments where um, you just kind of like take a step back and you kind of recognize God's faithfulness or God's sovereignty. Um, this weekend is kind of one of those weeks for me just because tomorrow is our, my, my wife and I, uh, our 13th anniversary, right? And so when we kind of celebrate things like that, it makes you kind of take a step back. Right, and you think about your life and just kind of like, how are we doing? You know, you take kind of an assessment of how's life going? And I think, you know, I can, I can honestly say to you, I love my life. I love my wife and my three kids. Um, I'm so blessed and so thankful. Um, but with that being said, sometimes I miss college. Right? It's, it's a weird thing because as much as I, I'm like so thankful for where I am right now, like college was a lot of fun. Right? It's, a, it's so strange because um, the best time of my life, probably right now, just continuing, I see there's beauty in every single season of life, and there's just so much, like, wonder and joy and, you know, thankfulness throughout all of life. But when you talk to a lot of people, when I just kind of take a moment to step back and reflect, I really do miss college just because I think college was the last time I was able to be completely irresponsible. Right? And that's probably it. Like, once you kind of graduate college, like, for me, as soon as I graduated college, I went into seminary and I started pastoring, right? And once you're pastoring, forget it. Game over. You're not allowed to be irresponsible anymore, right? Um, I know you college students, you're getting depressed. Uh, don't be depressed. Life gets better and better and better. But um, it's true. Like, during this time, um, like, during college, like, you know, literally going out to eat at Denny's at 2 o'clock in the morning because someone was like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm like, I'm not really hungry, but I'll eat, right? Like, totally irresponsible, totally, like, no thought as to, oh, yeah, I have class also. Um, but that was just college. Um, and then as you get out of college, life gets a little bit more difficult. Right, as you continue and get, go through your life, I say this to my kids all the time, as you're getting old, as you get older and older and older, life gets more and more stressful. Isn't that true? Is you just kind of, you know, take an assessment of your life, and for me, you know, I think of my responsibilities as a pastor, I, take, I think of my responsibilities as a son or as a husband or as a dad, as a brother, as a friend, and I'm like, oh boy, um, I truly love my life. Boy, it gets stressful sometimes. And you got to be careful with stress because stress is, you know, as they say, it's that silent killer, right? When you think about stress, there are all these different things uh, um, that kind of just weigh you down. So I, I looked online and there are these things. What do people stress out about, right? And it says um, just not having enough time, right? When you're just going through your life and you just feel like, oh, I, I have a deadline and I need to meet that deadline, you begin to feel stressed, when you start living an unhealthy lifestyle, a lot of times that comes as a result of not having enough time, right? So rather than sitting down and having a proper meal, you'll just stop by at McDonald's and, you know, eat something you know that you're going to regret. But, you know, hey, I just, I don't have time to cook. Maybe taking on too much. And, you know, you have your responsibilities and, you know, other people just kind of constantly want to add to your responsibilities. And at one point or another, we know that we have to say no, but... You know, a lot of us, we're, peop we we're afraid of people, and we're afraid to say no to people. And so because of that, we just take on more and more and more, and it becomes very stressful. And life just kind of progresses that way. But you got to be careful, because if you continue to live your life that way, and continue to live your life with that sort of stress, um, there are terrible effects that stress has on your body. It says on your brain, it has difficulty concentrating. You get anxiety, depression, irritability. Um, on your skin, you get hair loss, right? You get dull nails or brittle hair. Um, that's kind of scary, right? Um, dry skin, acne, um, all of these things are related to stress. Cardiovascular, it says higher cholesterol, blood pressure, higher blood pressure, increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Muscles and joints increase inflammation and tension. Your immune system, the decreased immune function. Your gut, your nutrition absorption gets difficult. You, you have diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, bloating. Like all of these terrible things happen to you when you stress out. So stop stressing. Let's pray.
I'm just kidding, right? I wish it was that easy, right? And we, I wish it was just like, you guys, you know, being stressful. I know I probably added to your stress with this chart, right? Um, you're like, wait, I, I'm already stressed, and now you're telling me how terrible this stress is. And now I'm like, my blood pressure is riding just listening to this. I want to tell you it's all right. God has a plan for your life, and it's all right. See, I think about why we stress. All right, why do we have all these worries and burdens? And a lot of times it's just really simple things that we don't really need to stress out about, but we do. Last week we talked about some very simple things, right? What you will eat, what you will drink, and what you will wear or basically, you know, shelter, right? Um, I want to continue on that. In Matthew chapter 6, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothes? Let's stop there for a second, right? Because I think Jesus is saying something very significant when he says this. He says, look, I know that you, you go through your life, so much of your life is just kind of worrying about these very basic things. What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. He says, look, I got you covered in those places. Think bigger. Think deeper. Right? He's basically saying to us, don't let yourself just narrow your life down to survival. There are things that are more significant in your life than just merely living and breathing. Is life not more than this? He says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or, store or stow away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? He says, stop worrying. Stop worrying. Because you matter to God. It's a very simple thing. Right? It's a very simple thing that we need to hear because I think even though we hear it, a lot of times we don't really quite get it. We don't, maybe we don't really quite believe it. But you know what it's saying? It says, look, I know that you are worried about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. But don't worry because those things are just on the surface of your needs. There are deeper needs that you have. And God is providing those needs for you. So stop worrying. Then he points to creation. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the flowers of the field. Right? Look, at, look at all of the ways that God provides for this world. Just trust. You see, I think the reason why we go through so much of our lives full of stress is because we forget who is the provider or the, the one who gives providence to his people, right? We forget who exactly is our sovereign and who is exactly our God. We go through much of our life taking on that responsibility for ourselves. But when I think about when we were truly carefree back in college, the reason why I think I was so carefree was because I knew my parents were paying the tuition, right? I knew that my parents were not just paying tuition, but my housing costs were taken care of. Whatever living expenses I had were taken care of. I had a credit card, and it was my parents that were paying the bill, right? It was simple. Life was simple because I didn't need to worry so much about how I'm going to survive. I knew that there was someone who loved me enough to make sure that all of my needs were taken care of. But now that I'm older, I feel almost as though those responsibilities rest on me. Right now, I've become the parent. And I'm the one that needs to take on that, the weight or the responsibility of survival. But the reality is, what God is saying is, no, that's not actually true. From beginning of time in your life, I've always been the one that's held your life in my hands. So he says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns. Look, I'm the one that's feeding them. And if I feed them, of course I would feed you. If I care 
and love for them. Of course, I would care for and love you. If I provide for them, of course, I would provide for and love you. Do not worry. Don't worry. I've got you. Don't worry. I'll provide for you. It's simple. Right? Jesus says, stop worrying about what you will eat or what you will drink, what you will wear. Because your Father in heaven knows that you need these things. And he'll provide for you. Ultimately, what he's saying is, you see all of this responsibility that you feel on your shoulders? Trust me with that. Lay it down at my feet. Let me cover you. Stress isn't just really from that. There are moments in our lives that tells us, right, that there are these major life changes that will cause stress in a person's life. And if there was not a time for these disciples, it was this, right? If there was a time that that these disciples felt the most stress, it was just before or just as Jesus was being crucified, right? And in John chapter 14, Jesus responds to his disciples. When he speaks to them in John 13, he begins telling them, look, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to be crucified, and then I'll be raised again. And they're like, oh my goodness, our lives are falling apart. This is just before Peter, den- said, you know, he predicts that Peter is going to deny him. So all of these terrible things are happening. They begin to be- get stressed out and worried, and Jesus responds with this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to a place to prepare? I'm going, to, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me. That you may also be where I am. Right? And he's saying, stop worrying even in the midst of deep trial and strain, right? Even in the midst of those moments when you feel like the, everything that you've been living for, everything that you've been kind of, that's been building up in your life is suddenly being taken away from you. Even in those moments when you feel like you, your life is completely falling apart or the one that you love is being taken away from you. Even in those moments, don't let your hearts be troubled. But trust in God and trust in Jesus. You see, what he's saying is trust in Jesus because there is a greater thing in your life than even those things. Even when you're going through your life struggles, when it feels like everything that you've lived up to, lived up for at this moment is about to be taken away from you, trust in Jesus. Because of eternity. Because of eternity. Because the limitations of the trials and struggles of this life ends at death. And so even if your very life is being taken from you, we trust in and put our faith in the one who holds eternity in his hands. And so he says, look, I'm going to heaven to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So even though I, this is a time of stress for you, even though you will not see me and you will kind of feel the weight of not being around me, realize, realize there is all of eternity for us. And then he says this, and I'm coming back for you. There is all of eternity for us, and I'll be back for you. As you feel the weight of the struggles of life upon your shoulders, he says, there is all of eternity, and I'll be back for you. See, I have a suspicion that the true reason for all of our stress The true reason for all the weight upon our shoulders is not simply just that. 
We worry about what we'll eat and what we'll drink. It's not just simply because of the trials or the situational trials of our lives. But I think it's because of sin. You see, I, I, I think it's because there's the sin in our lives that causes a separation from the one that we truly love. And because of that, it causes us to lose sight of what really matters. Let me explain what I mean. This past week, um, my wife and the kids, they went out to Ocean City to visit um, some people who were on vacation. They went just for one day. Um, they went on Friday, came back on Saturday. So Friday came, my wife left, and I was like, yes! I got the house to myself, right? Um, Friday afternoon came, and I was like, oh, I miss them, right? It was, it was kind of a weird thing, right? And I was like, oh, man, I got to... And then by, by Friday night, I was like, when are they coming? Like, like why are they gone for so long? When, when are they going to come home? Like, then by Saturday, I'm like, I really kind of hope, and I'm calling them constantly. I'm sure she was, Sarah was like, will you stop calling? We're trying to have some fun right now. But, like, I was just kind of waiting for them to come. You see, the thing is, because for me, I love my family so much, like, to be separated from them, it's like a weight on me. I feel a weight on my heart when they're not near me. And I feel like that, I go through so much of my life with that, just like that with God also, right? Because I love God so much, there are these moments when I feel complete and whole when God is right there and right near me. But then there are these other times when I know that I'm sinful and I know that my heart is far from God and it feels like this underlying gut-wrenching pain in my heart and I just try to cover it up and pretend it's not there. I go through much of my life pretending that it's not there. But the moment I see God face to face, all of this emotion of God, it's been so hard to be without you. And I'm so thankful that I'm near to you now. You see, I feel like so much of the weight of sin is the, is the true and genuine source of that sin, of that stress in us. And it's because of the separation that we have from the one that we are truly in love with. And that every single time we consider how far we are from God as a result of our sin, it causes us to separate more and more and feel the weight of it in our hearts more and more. So many of us go through our lives blaming our work deadlines and blaming just you know, the loneliness that we feel and blaming other people in our lives who are adding to our stress, but the reality is underlying all of that is the separation that we feel from God, our true love of our lives. And because of that, our hearts are constantly heavy. Because of that, it's, we find ourselves feeling like it's impossible for us to just be at peace. You see, because I think that there are many of us who come into this room and we walk in with smiles on our faces, but a burden on our hearts. And we come in seeking, God, are you, are you here? Are you near? Do you love me? And it's that weight that causes the greatest, greatest strain upon our hearts. Because ultimately, what we are longing for is that love. There's a song that we sing occasionally as a congregation. I feel like it addresses these needs. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come? To the end of yourself. Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today. There's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows, trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. O 
come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I think when we hear the truth, those words, Jesus is calling. A lot of times we feel the weight of that sin and we feel like, God, how could you possibly love me if I sin against you? And so because of every sin, we feel as though God is taking a step away from us. But the reality is it's us that's taking a step away from him. With every sin, we take one step away. But thankfully, all it takes is one step back. Where Jesus is calling. And forgiveness was bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So I want to remind you of these words from 2 Corinthians. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled. God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, there in the very, is the very core of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he is reconciling us, that when we feel the separation, it is Christ that reconciles us and draws us and pulls us back into his presence. So that though we once felt the strain of being far from God, when we come and are reconciled with God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the cross and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we are able to be face to face with the one that loves us most and whom we love the most. Finally, whole. Finally, at rest. See, I believe that we can find a stress-free life, not simply because of the providence of God, but the ultimate providence that he has given us at the cross, a providence of reconciliation through the Lamb of God who was crucified for us. So leave behind your regrets and your mistakes. Come today. There's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. In him, be reconciled with the one that you love. That in him we might find the healing in our hearts. So we can start, suddenly live worry-free. Suddenly find ourselves no longer allowing our hearts to be troubled, but instead trusting in God and trusting in Jesus. Let's pray together.